Now I know what you're thinking. Did he shoot six shots or only five? Well, seeing as this is the Nerf Kronos, the most powerful Nerf gun ever made, and could blow your head clean off, you gotta ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do ya, punk? Apparently, Briet decided she wanted to be part of the video. I don't know why. She didn't enjoy the movie when I watched it last night. Do you want to go down? You want to be put down. Okay, here you go. All right. I'm back with another critical review of a movie that came out a while ago. This one a good while ago. Like the 70s. So, Dirty Harry. There's not a ton that I really can think to say about this movie outside of I love older action movies. I've always been a massive fan of like seeing everything that occurs um, within said action film. One of the reasons that I dislike a lot of action films that are coming out now, um, and it's a personal problem that I have with them, is that a lot of them use very choppy editing, shaky cam, darker sets, and all that uh, for their action scenes. Meaning you don't actually see what's going on. They're implying the action as opposed to showing the action. Um, a YouTube channel that I really like, Corridor Crew, uh, they have a great video that was released fuck, five years ago now, maybe? I actually don't know when it was released. Anyway, uh, it's basically talking about why modern action films suck. Um, and it basically is going over the same points that I'm currently telling you uh, with the whole issue of they... Uh, the at, uh, it's choppier, more disjointed. It's basically what I'm saying right now. Anyway, uh, Dirty Harry, it's a phenomenal film. It's insanely good. I find it insanely entertaining every time I've watched it. As you can tell, I quoted like the most famous line from the film in the beginning. Or parodied it because I don't have a 44 Magnum. Even if I did, I totally wouldn't have actually pointed it at my team. But I did have this. Which is basically one of the most powerful nerf guns ever made. So, so anyway, if you don't know, uh, Dirty Harry, and wow, I probably should have explained this at the beginning. Anyway, Dirty Harry is an action movie starring Clint Eastwood. Uh, it's about a cop, Harry Callahan, which I realize it's weird that three of my favorite uh, series and franchises have a main character named Harry. Uh, Harry Potter, Harry Dresden, and now Dirty Harry. Yeah, I'm just gonna chalk that up to coincidence. I am rambling. Anyway, uh, the basic plot of Dirty Harry is that crazy guy wants money, so he's killing people until he gets that money. Ca Harry, as a cop, is tasked with finding out who this is and stopping him. Normally I try to avoid spoilers in the critical reviews, but... This movie's been out for nearly 50 years, if I'm doing my math right. So, you know, I don't think it matters. Yeah, basically, Crazy Gunman wants money and Harry's tasked with finding the guy. Um, that's the basic plot, and that really is all there is to it. Harry ends up getting a new partner named Gonzalez, who they go through this stuff. Gonzalez ends up getting hurt by the bad guy. Harry basically says, hey, you should get out. Uh, Harry ends up tracking down bad guy, but he ends up, Gonzalez basically says, I think I'm going to quit, and Harry says, you should, um, and that he understands and is totally fine with that happening. He doesn't think that the life is for everyone, and he even doesn't know why he is still doing it, but at the end of the movie, after he gets the guy, which it's a 70s action movie, of course Harry's going to get the guy, Harry leaves the force, which... I gotta respect the filmmakers for, like, doing. Most movies like this would have him just be like, eh, fuck it, I'm gonna stay. And no, he straight up kills the guy and then chooses to leave, which I thought was great. Bree, what do you want to kill? My cat's, like, right behind the camera, wanting to murder something outside. But yeah, Clint Eastwood's amazing in this. The guy that plays Gonzalez is great. The movie's just a lot of fun. I think my favorite part, though, is the villain of this film. He... <laughs> Oh man, the bad guy is great. He is completely and utterly insane. Seriously, when he first, like, when Harry first, like, actually meets the guy, like, close up, he's basically like, ha 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 ha, just kicking the shit out of him, completely maniacal. He's like, no, 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 you're not allowed to pass out yet. He's like, 
it is like, oh no, if you defend yourself, I'll kill the girl. And then it's literally the next second he goes, by the way, I decided I'm going to kill her anyway. Just thought you should know before you die. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? It's just, the dude is absolutely amazing. Um, he's so much fun to watch. I think my favorite is he gets stabbed in his response is, oh! Just like, Fucking howls when he gets stabbed. It is the funniest fucking reaction to me. Oh my god. Another favorite part is when Harry, like, he gets confronted by Harry. Harry's like, tell me where the girl is. I have the right to a lawyer. Tell me where she is. I want a lawyer. I have the right to a lawyer. All right, well, the bullet hole in your leg is looking fine, so I'm just going to step on it. Ah! It was really funny to me. It's a very fucked up scene of police torture, but it's really, really funny to me personally. <laughs> Just the way it happens, because he's like raving like a maniac. When he gets like released from the hospital, he pays a guy $200 to beat the shit out of him and then blames the San Francisco Police Department, specifically Harry. Which goes to prove that this movie was made in the 70s because Harry doesn't immediately get kicked off the force for this. Like... <laughs> it's, seriously, Harry is still on the force. He is straight up asked at the end of the movie if he wants to take the money to the crazy man. And he's like, the fuck? But he's still on the force. Why is he still on the force? He should have been kicked off as soon as the torture thing happened. <laughs> I love this movie though, it's so much fun. The dude then proceeds to buy a bottle of booze, to knock the owner out, to steal his gun, to hijack a bus, which Harry proceeds to then, you know, find and catch up to him, where he fires upon Harry with said gun, has a chase through a plant, th through a, like, sawmill, or quarry? I think it's quarry. Where Harry ends up shooting him after he threatens to blow a child's brains out. All the while, he is acting like a complete and utter madman. Seriously, while he's on the bus, this is one of my personal favorite moments of the film. He starts singing, he has the kids sing Row, Row, Row Your Boat because he's trying to like keep them happy. One of the kids starts freaking out because he's like, that's not where they're supposed to go and he wants his mom. He walks up, smacks the kid, and starts singing, sing, sing or I will kill all of you motherfuckers. Sing, sing or I'll kill your mothers. I'm like, what the fa? The bus driver at this point starts crying because you shouldn't treat kids like that. I'm, that's almost how it's delivered in the film. So I like, I am poking fun at it, but that is how it's delivered. Uh, <laughs> to which, like, his response, I don't care, just keep going. It's fucking phenomenal. I love every second of this film. Oh, my God. This is one of those movies where your mindset going in is extremely important. The, the movie is... It's made in the 70s, so, like... I wasn't expecting the most, like, politically correct type of thing, um, especially for them. But, like, there's a scene that I find extremely problematic nowadays. I still enjoy it because it's giving character depth to Harry. He gets a guy who's about to commit suicide to attack him while he's on the lift by basically being like, Yeah, nah, if you fall, it's real messy. Could you just give me your name and address, please? Like so that we don't have to try and find your driver's license in that mess. And the dude's like, fuck you! And like tries to get him, and Harry just grabs him, knocks him out, and then drags his ass into the crane with him so he holds on so that the guy doesn't fall and splat anyway. It's great. Uh, <laughs> which, I don't think that's how you should handle a jumper, but what do I know? I'm not on the San Francisco Police Department in the 1970s. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, the scene that I find extremely problematic is, uh, Harry's partner Gonzalez asks why he is called Dirty Harry, to which another cop responds by saying, cause he hates everyone, and then proceeds to, 
list off. Um, 10 to 15 racial slurs, including the N-word with a hard R, um, to explain it. Gonzalez responds with, what about Mexicans? And Harry responds with, especially s Yeah, definitely gonna have to loop that out. And, no, just know if you're mad at me for saying that word, um, I honestly... I never grew up hearing it as a slur. I didn't know it was a slur for the longest time, and we learned it was a slur after I started watching movies where characters are using it as a slur, so I literally never heard that word growing up, so it has zero relevance to me in my brain. Still don't like using it. I dislike using slurs in general, unless my friends are chill with it, and then we insult each other all the time because we're weird. Honestly, not a ton for me to say about this movie, other than if you like older action movies, I would say watch it. With that, I give this movie a, I'd say this movie rolls a solid 17. 70s, so it has a little more issues than I would personally like. Um, I think some of the bigger ones are that there are multiple scenes in this film that are shot completely in darkness. Like, there are flashes of light and you can kind of see what's happening, but, and you know, 70s, they didn't have the technology that we have now with like fairly light lights to, yes, that's awkward. Like lighter weight lights to be able to shine and like illuminate everything so there are multiple scenes where it's like actual darkness it's really hard to make out what's going on on screen which i think degrades the film a little bit but overall i don't mind it a ton it doesn't detract too much from the film in my opinion like i said movie 17 it's highly enjoyable and i enjoy going back to it every now and then especially just for a mindless action film that is a lot of fun Clint Eastwood, I think, is a great actor. The villain's fucking phenomenal and amazing to watch and probably the best part about the movie. And it, I just find it entertaining. That's all there really is to it. But, yeah. Hey, guys, I hope that you enjoyed that video. If you did enjoy it, uh, please leave a like and comment down below. If you like the content that I put out here and would like to continue to follow me, please leave... Please hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter or Instagram, links to both of those are going to be in the description down below. If you'd like to watch more of my critical reviews on movies that have been coming out for the past year and a few more shows, there should be a playlist somewhere on the screen right over here, as well as potentially some other video that YouTube thinks you will enjoy. And that's all I have for now, guys. As always, have a great day. Don't forget to love each other. And as always, peace out, guys.